The SNP's great closing down sale can't get any worse. They've just offered a two for one offer, a coalition with Labour. Braveheart has turned out to be Brutus. Uh, not a week goes by without the SNP messing up. Uh, some particular sector or service. The SNP is never short of uh, a grievance, but it is now running out of excuses. They've lost their leader, they've lost their chief executive, they've lost £600,000, they've lost 30,000 members, they've lost a by-election to us. I look forward to next week what those excuses might be, the execution of Mary Queen of Scots, uh, the Highland clearances, the Hundred Years' War. They've lost collective responsibility, they've lost the will to defend their record and the rose-tinted glasses they've used their own performance through and uh, and they have also uh, this week lost the plot. I hope the Honourable Gentleman will forgive me if we don't trust him on the figures. Today we have learnt also of the very modest ambition of the Scottish people to have a few miles of the A9 uh, duelled is unlikely uh, to transpire um, despite uh, them having had uh, waited for 11 years uh, before that uh, has uh, happened. I understand the minister responsible has blamed uh, Vladimir Putin for the delay. Um, she talks about projects that are delayed and uh, overspend. Uh, to, this week we have had to have the Secretary of State for uh, the Department for Work and Pensions uh, write to the Scottish Government, uh, urging them to take up the powers uh, that were available to them uh, since 2016 on welfare. Um, at the time, they said they could create an independent state by spending just uh, £200 million, and yet the assessments for them taking over the benefit system uh, now are sitting at £685 million. Pounds. And of course, uh, this week uh, we have had, uh, it might be because the Scottish Government has difficulty managing uh, projects and budgets, that we have learnt uh, the need for the Scottish National Party uh, to receive loans, uh, loans that breached uh, electoral rules. Uh, we have, of course, uh, more unexplained loans, the 19 complaints from SNP supporters currently being investigated by the police, allegations of fraud for around 600,000 missing donations, their former treasurer who quit due to the murk of the SNP's finances, along with three others on the Finance Committee, or more recently the uh, SNP-led council, which has just called for another police investigation into uh, those ferries. The SNP want to raise tax, uh, but not to spend it on public services. They want to represent the people of Scotland, but don't listen to them, their views or priorities. They want to take authority, but with no responsibility, and Scotland deserves better. Yes, I'm afraid this is the latest wheeze from the SNP to risk jobs and burn taxpayers' money. Uh, let us not forget, this is the party that, during the pandemic, hired a testing firm at the cost of £10 million uh, that promptly furloughed all of its staff. In fairness to them, they did try and guarantee uh, some jobs. They paid a company um, the tune of uh, £5 million per job and then failed to secure any of those jobs. Audit Scotland said of the, of the Scottish Government it had no framework to deal with the private sector. And of course, the most spectacular uh, is the fact that they have paid the cost of 24 ferries for just two vessels. The SNP chose to use their Opposition Day debate not to talk about health or education or care or opportunity or social mobility or business or farming or anything uh, else related to the Scottish people. There were no surprises in the topic that they chose and how they used the precious time they had on the floor of this House and squandered that. Their motion is not a mandate. It wasn't even a binding motion. And uh, what, was, what was surprising is that not all of the SNP voted for it. Um, uh, but there we go. I long for the day when uh, honourable members opposite uh, will actually follow the democratic mandate uh, of, uh, of the people of Scotland. Uh, now it was a once-in-a-generation vote. Now is not the time to be trying to have another one. People should be focused on the, the needs of the Scottish people, on improving education standards, getting people uh, access to health. But I know this is what I say uh, to the Honourable Lady every week, so let me give her another reason. Um, because we learned today that uh, uh, for there to be an independent Scotland in Europe, um, Scotland would have to join the Euro. Wow. And if she can tell us uh, how she intends to do that, uh, then I'll be happy to uh, take her question again.
I have always advertised the differences that there are uh, across the nations of the United Kingdom and uh, regional differences uh, in England as one of the strengths of the Union, as well as the things that we have in common. Um, she accuses me of... Uh, uh, talking Scotland down and uh, not celebrating it. Co au contraire, and if she looks back at the speeches I've made to this, from this dispatch box, she will know that is not the case. I'm not talking Scotland down. I'm talking about the SNP running Scotland down. And I'm very happy to compare uh, our record uh, of stewardship of public services against the SNP's. Uh, not a week goes by without the SNP messing up uh, some particular sector or service. This week, uh, highlights include the SNP pressing ahead with short-term lets licensing, which will, on the 1st of October, see thousands of businesses potentially close in Scotland and put some people in jeopardy of losing their homes, clobbering Scotland's tourist sector too. It has also emerged this week that complaints about SNP administered benefits have increased by 350%. And while the economy recovers and people are still having to tighten their belts, uh, they think it's a brilliant idea to introduce a congestion charge. Scotland deserves better than socialist separatist parties. And yet again, uh, the Honourable Lady has demonstrated that the SNP are yesterday's people talking about yesterday's grievances. They are yesterday's party. She invites me to tell uh, this House what, I, what I've learned in my very uh, pleasant trips uh, to uh, Scotland over the summer. I did learn that uh, Scotland has slower economic growth uh, than England. I was shocked to learn that Victorian diseases have actually returned to certain cities in Scotland, such as Ricketts, uh, that Glasgow's rat problem is now so bad it is precluding bin men actually accessing certain streets because it's too dangerous for them. I discovered that the bill to Scottish taxpayers of the smelting business debacle stands at £32 million. I discovered that £33 million pounds that was ring fence for Scottish farmers has gone AWOL. I also learnt that the Scottish auditors have only been able to give a qualified sign-off to the SNP's oh. accounts. Uh, I toured other parts of the, the UK as well. I, um, and in Manchester, I discovered, uh, the Honourable Lady will be interested in this, that Manchester police have been forced to issue a crime reference number following a complaint about the SNP giving uh, um, constituency seats for cash. And I also learnt that the Scottish programme for government uh, announced this week has a billion pound black hole. I um, thank the Honourable Lady for inviting me to get that on record. Um, the Honourable Lady seeks to blame everyone else for this situation. Me, the UK government, anyone else uh, that is around, uh, except uh, the Scottish Government. A former colleague of hers, even this summer, uh, tried to put the blame on uh, foreign uh, agents of a foreign power infiltrating the SNP and taking all these terrible decisions. The SNP is never short of uh, a grievance, but it is now running out of excuses. I look forward to next week, what those excuses might be, the execution of Mary Queen of Scots, uh, the Highland clearances, the Hundred Years' War, the grotesque chaos and appalling public services her constituents are suffering from and the rest of the Scottish people are entirely down to the SNP alone. They are now a sad, spent force yeah. and no longer the UK's separatist party. That dubious honour now goes to the Labour Party in Wales. I know that uh, there would be no mention of the 320 million of extra funding for Scotland, uh, the investment zone and other measures to benefit households and businesses in Scotland. I welcome those things, even if the SNP does not. This week, um, she asks me about uh, measures to assist uh, cost of, uh, alleviate cost of living and uh, help improve uh, living standards. Uh, we have a 94 billion package that was uh, announced in the uh, budget. Uh, she doesn't like what we have done on uh, pensions with regard to key professions such as doctors, experienced teachers. I'm very sorry to, to see that not welcomed, as I think it would be welcomed by uh, many in those professions and would uh, tempt them to stay uh, in the workplace. Uh, with regard to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, this, department, uh, this uh, government hasn't just left those with departments. We have put them at the heart of government. They are in the annual reports of uh, every government uh, department we uh, report against them. She talks about uh, carbon capture and tidal energy. I'd remind her that uh, 
the Treasury uh, actually had a carve-out uh, for tidal energy. We recognise that these emerging technologies will find it difficult to uh, compete with other uh, uh, renewables, more, more advanced and more uh, developed technology. Uh, we've done that because we believe that tidal is part of the answer and we want that technology to develop. With regard to carbon capture, I'm sorry that uh, she's, uh, she's not keen on the 41 million that we've invested into the Scottish cluster. I just gently remind her the SNP promised to invest 80 million. Uh, and I don't think they've invested uh, anything uh, yet, Mr Speaker, which is very unfortunate. It is exactly from the uh, playbook of look at what we say, not what we do uh, politics. She wants to, us to listen to concerns, and her colleagues this week have raised issues about lack of scrutiny, but not, she doesn't want us to look at their attendance record in debates. We've heard her raise her dismay at de divisive language, but she doesn't want us to clock the uh, hate fuel bile that comes from many SNP uh, uh, campaigners at anyone who loves the union or dares to challenge them on any of their policies. She wants to preach about offshore tax havens and offshore schemes, but wants us to discount the use of such schemes, as we've discovered this week by the Scottish Government, as we have seen in the CalMAC tax scandal. And she wants us to listen to the leadership candidates in her party saying they can be trusted on health care, that they'll turbocharge the economy and are brimming with ideas, but doesn't want us to recognise that they have crushed health, stifled growth and need to set up commission after commission to find uh, some ideas. She would also like us to see the SNP as a champion of democracy and not look at their rejection of the referendum result. Does she not recognise the extraordinary occurrence this week of membership candidates in the leadership, the, the uh, candidates in the leadership contest, having to write a letter in order to try and guarantee a free and fair election? If the candidates were called Mo, Larry, and Curly, it couldn't get any more slapstick. And given the SNP's previous form and contempt for democracy, I wonder if this contest. Uh, they are going to actually adhere to the, to the result at all. Will the candidates try and test the result in the courts, cry foul, or attempt a rerun of the process on their own and claim it's legitimate? I'm afraid we've got two more weeks of this, but we know the outcome already. Whoever wins, Scotland will lose. They've lost their leader, they've lost their chief executive, they've lost £600,000, they've lost 30,000 members, they've lost a by-election to us, uh, they've lost collective responsibility, they've lost the will to defend their record and the rose-tinted glasses they view their own performance through, and, uh, and they have also uh, this week lost the plot. But they have the opportunity to find something and restore something. This could be a fresh start and the beginning of actually serving the people of Scotland by focusing on their needs. Whoever uh, is the new leader of her party and the First Minister uh, in Scotland, we stand ready to work constructively with whoever that leader is. I, I can't keep up with the changes to the SNP's energy policy, but I think roughly they're against all forms of energy, um, except perhaps hot air. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not Scotland that is the basket case, it is uh, the, the SNP. Uh, the, the second uh, point she raises is one I personally take very, very seriously, and that is um, with regard to uh, illegal migration. Um, like many members uh, in this House, I think on all sides of this House, I'm hosting uh, a Ukrainian refugee at the moment. Prior to that, I offered my home for Afghan refugees, uh, and prior to getting into this place, I was an aid worker. I take these matters very seriously, and that is why this bill is needed, because unless we can give safe nations like the UK, the powers they need to run effective systems, systems that don't just rely on your ability to get in to a country illegally in order to get some kind of chance at help. Uh, we will not be able to continue uh, the generous uh, uh, history that we have as this nation of being somewhere uh, that uh, people can gain sanctuary. So I would urge her in all seriousness to reflect 
on that and to engage with the Illegal Migration Bill as it makes passage uh, through this House. And finally, I do want to uh, welcome the, the First Minister. It is, as the Honourable Lady points out, a historic uh, moment uh, and I think will be an inspiration to many people and send a strong message uh, that high office is, uh, uh, if you have the, uh, the skills and the, the will to get there, is, uh, is open to uh, everyone. I wish him and his new team well. I want to, along with the rest of my government, to work constructively uh, with him. Um, I am sorry to see that in day one we did have uh, a cancellation to the ferry service at, uh, at South Use, which is going to be unavailable uh, in, in April and May uh, due to the fragility of that service and the lack of uh, substitute vessels. I know the First Minister wanted to build on his uh, predecessor's uh, record, uh, but I had hoped it wouldn't quite be uh, uh, like that. I hope that he will focus on the issues that matter to the people of Scotland and be a First Minister that fights for causes that matter, not just uh, causes fights. For some time now, uh, BBC Politics Scotland has resembled an episode of Taggart. <laughs> so I thank him for for showing up today. Um, he, he raises... I, I, I have great sympathy with what he, with what he says uh, about um, uh, being able to view uh, considerable recent uh, uh, Scottish sporting uh, victories, and I shall uh, make sure that colleagues have, uh, have heard that. Um, and then he raises the, the matter of uh, the, the Foreign Secretary's concern that the SNP are spending uh, so much uh, time, uh, effort and money on, uh, on matters which they um, do not have the, the uh, uh, a competency in both senses of the word uh, to, to do. Um, and he asked me why the Foreign Secretary might be feeling that way, and I would just suggest to him it might be uh, the Honourable Gentleman's uh, own views. He, he raises the, uh, uh, the matter of um, uh, the Small Boats Bill, which he's, he's touched on uh, and has been doing a lot of uh, work on recently and making his views on that very clear. I just say to him I think it is a compassionate thing to do to make our asylum system effective. I think it's a compassionate thing to do to break the business model of people smugglers and to enable us, with the finite resources we have, to use those to help those in, in genuine need. We've got to deal with the reality of this situation. And the Honourable Gentleman's arguments against the Bill are drawn from fantasy. He says, and I quote, our motivation is a legacy of our colonial past or the fact that we wish to profit from the supply of warring factions with weapons. Is he talking about Ukraine? Ukraine is not a warring faction. It is a sovereign nation under attack. And I'm proud of what this country has done to support the Ukrainian people. Let me enlighten him about some other things that we should be proud of in our country rather than talk it down. The Halo Trust being one, based in Dumfries and Galloway, I think it's done more to demine and strip out weapons than any other organisation in the world. We should be really proud of that. He says the Small Boats Bill is a, a legacy of our CO2 emissions and the impact they have had on many of the world's poorest nations. No industrial nation has done more to cut its carbon emissions faster than the, the UK. It's done more than any G20 nation, and Glasgow paid, played a huge part in that. The UK is more than halfway to meeting its net zero target. I hope the SNP will stop talking Scotland and the rest of the UK down. We are going to do what is necessary in this bill and in other areas to protect the vulnerable and the planet, to promote peace. Uh, we do not pass the buck and shirk responsibility. That we will leave to the Honourable Gentleman and his party. I hope the Honourable Gentleman will forgive me if we don't trust him on the figures. Um, I'm happy to. Um, in, in, all, in all honesty, Madam Deputy Speaker, in all honesty, Madam Deputy, I'm really surprised at uh, what the Honourable Gentleman has said and his, his choice of uh, questioning today. Um, no humility, no regret, no apology. I, I think whatever our political beliefs and differences over our ambitions for the, the Union, I think there is a common understanding amongst all of us in this place of the shared values 
and the principles that underpin our democracy. I hope that is the case. I will never share the belief that the, um, the Honourable Gentleman's uh, party membership hold on, uh, on Scottish independence. Uh, I may also disagree with uh, Lord Frost on occasion. But I do think that I understand the SNP's membership uh, ambitions and what they are they are based on because they are based on the same things that my ambitions for our country are based on too. Self-determination, agency, moral courage, the progress of humanity, the love of country, and how devastating it must be to SNP members and supporters to have placed their hopes and trust at the hands of people who have been so reckless with their dreams and the mandate that they have given them. And and now they know how many Scottish taxpayers also feel when they look at the SNP's ruinous sell-off and sell-out of their country. And just when you think the farce that has been going on in Scotland over the past weeks, the SNP's great closing down sale can't get any worse. They've just offered a two-for-one offer, a coalition with Labour.